Good day, and thank you for availing yourselves from your busy schedules to take the time to listen to my thoughts on the topic that has been provided to me. And this is entitled, The Relevance of Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment, or Triple B Double E, in Human Resources. So given the nature of the topic, let's take a few moments to set the context and perhaps also do some reflection. As many of you are aware, the broad-based Black Economic Empowerment Framework and legislation was implemented by the Government of South Africa in order to redress the inequalities of the past from multiple aspects, some of these being enhancing capabilities and bringing more Black people into the formal economy, as well as mobilizing all South Africans in order to build socioeconomic growth. So 26 years into democracy, 22 years since promulgation of the EE and Skills Development Acts, and 17 years since the Triple B, Double E Act. Let's do a bit of reflection on some of the statistics. As Winston Churchill says, however beautiful your strategy, you should occasionally look at the results. So I'm going to highlight just a few of data points to give us a sense of where we are. So if we can look at management control, which was released by the BEE Commission National Status most recent report, this has improved for black board members from 38% to 44%, noting that whites still dominate with about 56% of the 150 entities evaluated by the Commission from the JSE. If we looked at senior management and I'm using a data point from the Commission of Employment Equity, and this would be over a 10 year period. When you look at senior management from an overall black perspective, there has been an improvement from 33% to 42%. However, when you look at black males specifically, the improvement has been from 12% to 24%. However, the economically active population is at 42%. When you look at black female at senior management, the improvement has been from 5,6% to 9% and the EAP at this level is at 36%. So in a nutshell, at senior management, males are still dominating this category at 12% higher than the economically active population. Furthermore, it is primarily still the white population that's benefiting from promotions and opportunities that have been created. At an overall level, both the white and Indian population are overrepresented relative to the economically active population, whilst the black population is still lagging. When you look at middle management, the picture is slightly more promising, and at junior management, we have more equitable representation of about 60% of black people. From a people with disabilities perspective, it is not looking good, where we're still hovering over a 20 year period at just only 1%. Skills development, however, has been improving at senior management specifically from 43% to 60% from a spend perspective. So these are just a few data points that I've touched on, but in a nutshell, the story or the narrative is clear. After two decades of transformation, we can see that the progress specifically at top management, senior management and people with disabilities is incremental rather than transformational. Furthermore, the gender pay gap still exists between males obviously favored at 25% higher than females, according to the giraffe survey, which happened in 2019. Over and above this landscape articulating what's happening from BEE, from a human capital perspective, we are just a microcosm of the broader socioeconomic climate. So it is also imperative to note that despite the 26 years of democracy, South Africa unfortunately still remains one of the most unequal societies in the world, with higher unemployment rates and high levels of poverty. Over and above that, as you are all aware, we are living in unprecedented times. We are facing one of the greatest crises since the Great Depression, which happened more than 90 years ago. 
we are currently facing what is now being referred to as the great lockdown crisis. So when one looks at all of that holistically, I think that the South African society was unfortunately fractured even pre-COVID-19. So what's happened now is COVID-19 has exposed all these live wires that we knew were there previously. When these are coupled with the structural deficits that we also face, it is clear to say that South Africa is facing multifaceted problems. So coming back to the topic at hand, what then should we be doing from a black economic empowerment space? So yes, BEE is still relevant for human resources, but I believe that it is only the strategic intent of BEE that is still relevant where we do want to in, uh, redress the inequalities of the past and also mobilize the energy of all South Africans so that we can propel this economy forward. So if one looks at the actual framework, so more than 30% of the BEE framework constitutes human capital elements. These including management control, employment equity and skills development. If you look at what COVID has done, it has recalibrated the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act. It has also recalibrated the way we connect, the way we collaborate, the way we create. So given that we are now in a new normal and the BEE policy has to pivot in order for us to be able to deliver in this new normal, which looks at new ways of working. Many of you are aware that more than 70% of our workforces had to start working remotely from home almost overnight. In addition, there are new ways of learning that have come to the fore and have been accelerated as a result of the impact of the virus. So I believe that there are opportunities for the BEE policy, specifically the construct of the BEE scorecard, to be pivoted to actually enable transformation in this new normal. So some examples include, firstly, if you look at the learning matrix, that needs to be updated in order to cater for digitized learning, in order to cater for new business models, and also to look at the balance of spend between the employed as well as the unemployed, and not only have a very myopic view of metrics, which look at things like levyable amounts and are dependent only on headcount growth and nutrition rates, which we all know in this environment is not going to be positive in order to enable positive transformation. Secondly, if one looks at the metrics for employment equity and skills development, they are quite segregated. But in actual fact and in reality, these two metrics should feed each other. If you are upskilling people, it should show in your pace of ascension of senior moving to top management or junior moving to middle management. These things are not tracked from that perspective. So we know that what gets measured gets done. So if your metrics continue to remain transactional, you will get a transactional outcome. However, if we start to measure things like culture, diversity of, uh, and inclusion, as well as employee engagement, we may just see a different picture for employment equity and skills development. If I can take a parallel example on the scorecard, one of the reasons why enterprise development works so well is because we don't only measure financial metrics. We are measuring what we call recoverable and non-recoverable metrics. So the non-recoverable is quite vital because it measures things like coaching and mentorship for the small businesses that we are actually supposed to be empowering. Empowerment is not only about funding, or looking at numbers. It is also about the softer things that we need to show. Where we are today, we actually need more human-centered leadership. We need more of what is referred to as AQ, which is the adaptability quotient, over and above just EQ, IQ, and the normal social intelligences that were required previously. So when one looks also at the BEE scorecard, it needs to pivot to acknowledge companies that have collaborated across the sectors in order to implement strategies for support to the employees for COVID-19. Now, this is not a suggestion to just improve your scoring. 
it is a suggestion to be able to recognize effort because recognizing effort of companies who are projecting lower headline earnings in an environment where our GDP growth is subdued, where National Treasury is predicting more than 55,000 businesses will fail, and where we know that it is likely that retrenchments are coming. We should be encouraging corporates to actually still continue to transform despite all of these difficulties. So it's really not about shifting the dial of the score, but being true to the strategic intent of BEE, which is to mobilize the energy of South Africans in order to propel our economy forward. We could also just give bonus points, for example, for companies that are actually taking care of employees that are going to be retrenched and giving them some sort of support. It could even be a simple thing, like trying to support your employees through your enterprise development value chain. So I guess in a nutshell, the scorecard needs to be pivoted and reorientated in order to support the new normal that we face. In a sense, we are building the plane whilst we are flying. So from that perspective, even the process of gazetting needs to change. We only literally have four months left for 2020. If we were going to go through the normal gazetting processes to change policies, we would have again missed the boat because we do not have the luxury of time. So in conclusion, as we move into an era of shared humanity, where a health crisis has unfortunately resulted in a very severe economic crisis and will result into a social crisis, we need policies such as BEE. Although it is only one instrument of driving transformation, it is a very important in instrument to stall equalize the society and try to level the playing fields. However, it cannot be implemented in the same shape and form that we find it in today. So some of the things that need to happen, there needs to be a better balance between pragmatism and purpose relative to compliance and control. There needs to be a better balance between inclusion and exclusion. There needs to be a better balance between the carrot and the stick approach. There needs to be a better balance between integration and segregation, also of metrics across the scorecard. There is a logic to the scorecard. Skills development is supposed to set the pace for building capabilities and capacity so that people can progress up the value chain from junior managers to middle to senior and eventually top management and or become entrepreneurs through skills development. The current construct of the scorecard does not cater for that. So these are just some examples of what can be done. Skills development again, notwithstanding the importance of both management control and employment equity from a human capital perspective, I believe that skills development is still one of the most important foundational aspects to keep us relevant and ensure that we as human beings survive in this environment that we face. So I will leave you with a quote from Mahatma Gandhi, which says, love as if you were to die tomorrow, but learn as if you were to live forever. I thank you for your attention.